и, и мы что, вот, имея в виду вот это соотношение, собираемся воевать с НАТО, что ли? Ну, это просто бред. In its latest report, the Institute for the Study of War says that Russia cannot defeat Ukraine or the West and will likely lose if the West mobilizes its resources to resist the Kremlin. That the war is unwinnable due to Russia's dominance is a Kremlin information operation and a glimpse into Russia's real strategy and only hope of success. The Kremlin must get the United States to the sidelines, allowing Russia to fight Ukraine in isolation and then proceed to Moscow's next targets, which Russia will also seek to isolate. The Kremlin needs the United States to choose inaction and embrace the false inevitability that Russia will prevail in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin's center of gravity is his ability to shape the will and decisions of the West, Ukraine, and Russia itself. The strategy that matters most, therefore, is not Moscow's war-fighting strategy, but the Kremlin's strategy to cause us to see the world as it wishes us to see it and make decisions in that Kremlin-generated alternative reality that will allow Russia to win in the real world. Those whose perspective aligns with the Kremlin's are not ipso facto Russian dupes. The Kremlin links genuine sentiment and even some legitimate arguments to Russia's interests in public debate. The Kremlin is also an equal opportunity manipulator. It targets the full spectrum of those making or informing decisions. It partially succeeds on every side of the political spectrum. Perception manipulation is one of the Kremlin's core capabilities, now unleashed with full force onto the Western public as the Kremlin's only strategy for winning in Ukraine. That is not a challenge most societies are equipped to contend with. The U.S. has the power to deny Russia its only strategy for success, nevertheless. The U.S. has allowed Russia to play an outsized role in shaping American decision-making, but the U.S. has also made many sound choices regarding Russia's war in Ukraine. The key successes achieved by Ukraine and its partners in this war have resulted from strategic clarity. Lost opportunities on the battlefield, on the other hand, have resulted from the West's failure to connect ground truths to our interests quickly enough to act. Fortunately, the U.S. faces an easier task in overcoming the Kremlin's manipulations than Russia does in closing the massive gap between Russia's war aims and its capabilities. The U.S. must surge its support to Ukraine, and it must do so in time. Delays come at the cost of Ukrainian lives, increased risk of failure in Ukraine, and the erosion of the U.S. advantage over Russia, granting the Kremlin time to rebuild and develop capabilities that it intends to use against the West likely on a shorter timeline than the West assesses. The U.S. must defeat Russia's efforts to alter American will and decision-making for reasons that transcend Ukraine. For the U.S. to deter, win, or help win any future war, U.S. decisions must be timely and connected to our interests, values, and ground truth. But above all, these decisions must be ours, concludes the Institute. In a newly released media clip, Putin once again dismisses Ukraine's right to sovereignty by saying that he's fighting for his historical lands. He says the idea that he's going to fight with NATO is complete nonsense designed to racket money from their NATO population due to discrepancy between defense budgets. развала Советского Союза, как Россия предлагала, выстраивали бы новые совершенно отношения в сфере безопасности в Европе. Ничего подобного сегодняшнего года не было. Просто учитывали бы наши интересы, о чем мы в сфере безопасности, о чем мы говорили из года в год, по сути, из десятилетия в десятилетие. Просто полно игнорировали. Прямо подошли прямо к нашим границам. Мы, что ли, двигались к границам тех стран, которые входили в блок НАТО. 
Мы же никого не трогали. К нам двигались. Мы что ли через океан перебрались к границам Северных Штатов? Нет, они к нам подходят и подошли вплотную. А мы что делаем? Только защищаем своих людей на наших исторических территориях. Поэтому э, то, что говорят по поводу э, э, того, что мы собираемся на, после Украины нападать на Европу, это полная чушь. Запугивание. Запугивание своего населения исключительно для того, чтобы выбивать из них деньги. Who else is secretly working for the adversary? Something tells me that the frenzy with which certain actors in the West are defending Russia, China and CO shows they are not nonpartisan. Now this is funny. A Belgian far-right politician, Philip de Winter, worked on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. De Winter wasn't shy of using racist tones in his campaigns. He coined the slogan, Eigen Volk Erst, Our People First a message later copied by many other populist individuals and parties whose rhetoric relies on anti-immigration policies. Philip made connections with many European far-right parties, Russian Rodina among them. He teamed up with French conspiracy theorist Renaud Camus, writing a book about the Great Replacement Theory, a conspiracy that white Christian life and culture are under threat due to mass immigration. The annexation of Crimea started de Winter's big Russian period. He took part in the sham referendum as an election observer. Journalist Lindsay Hilsom bummed into the Flemish observers, who were apparently both extremely drunk and extremely late from their polling stations. In 2015, he stepped down as the party leader and now had free reign to go abroad. After meeting Syria's brutal dictator, Bashar al-Assad, De Winter had nothing but good things to say about the man, I am impressed. We had talks for one hour. He's a brave and impressive man. In 2015, Russia invited De Winter over in the Duma to talk as a guest speaker. Philip even had time to take a selfie with his Siloviki idol, Sergei Naryshkin, who is one of Putin's most hawkish supporters. Ironically, during the same year, Russia published a report on extremist political parties in Europe, which branded De Winter's Vlams Belang as a party based on Hitler's Nazism. It looks like someone forgot to send a, they're actually the good guys memo. Philip had proven his worth in Crimea, so why not bring him in and observe another election, this time for the made up Republic of Donetsk. He even took some pictures with the invaders and the footage was shown later on RT. De Winter was also of practical use to the Kremlin. He allegedly connected Arcadia, a Belgian company that produces drones, night vision goggles, 360 cameras, etc for military purpose, with Russian officials. Just before Russia's full-scale invasion of 2022, De Winter advocated Russia was an ally and Belgium should stay neutral in any conflict. Philip then showed a picture of him and Gregory Kuznetsov, a man who was later expelled as a Russian spy. In a hysterical turn of events, De Winter was rebranded by the Russians as a European nuclear expert. RIA Novosti reported that Filippo said there are 150 American tactical warheads in Turkey and Eastern Europe, which there of course aren't. He's also supported the Chinese peace plan for Ukraine and naturally blamed the US for the conflict, stating that they like to milk this conflict as long as possible because it benefits their gas and weapons industries. Recently, De Winter and his former associates have been connected to the CCP. Kreilman, one of De Winter's associates and the drunk election observer of Crimea, was exposed as a spy who's working for the Xi Gang. Maybe De Winter jumped ship too? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.